not, if so, you won't be able to have an AJAG as a souvenir or whatever you want to do for, you know, throw darts at it. Anonymity. Uh, she's not here today. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have an interview later. Uh, welcome to everybody, and, uh, you know, thanks for coming, and uh, all the trials and tribulations you had to get through, you know, how you're getting. Um, I'm not speaking clearly because I haven't had enough sleep, yet, and I'll try to remedy that situation, so I'll speak more intelligently the next time I try. So, thanks everyone for coming, and the speed is open. Yes, sir. So, and I, I forgot your markers. Markers there. Markers there. We don't have a racer. Oh, well, hey, you can use the paper. The microfiber. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, go no, your markers. Okay. Um, yes. Beautiful. Okay. He's really good. Oh, thank you. Ooh, cash. <laughs> So I'm Brian, this Brian did his blur. Uh, the remote is on its way. Oh, okay. Don't touch oh, that screen. All right. It goes All right. <laughs> won't, uh, won't touch it though. Yeah, it, it, it messes with the audio system. Which is a whole other battle. So we're still, so, uh, we're still missing uh, so LD. Oh, LD had to take it. Yeah, 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 he's on. That's fair. He's on it. Yeah. Where's Aaron? He's going to be right back. Jamie, I'll just do an introduction thing. Sure. Over moving the soccer. Okay, so uh, first, welcome to the DevCon. Sorry, it's a late start, but that's usually what happens. <laughs> so it's not much plan. Um, so what I was going to do is uh, first let Brian speak for another minute. He has something more to share. And then I thought we'd do a little quick introductions around the room just to let everybody know who everybody else is in case uh, we don't know each other. Okay, so Brian, right, okay. please. Thank you. There was one question that I, one of those things that I know the answer to, so I think everybody else does. Uh, and you are pretty confused most of the time, so it would not be a good thing to try. Uh, but uh, some people have wondered, you know, why we're charging, uh, you know, 50 bucks a head to do this. Uh, nobody here is getting paid. Uh, the 50 bucks a head goes to pay for the ruthless. And so uh, you know, that's what that's about. Uh, yeah, I, I wish that we had the budget to support that uh, and have it all for free. That would be good. But uh, at this point, you know, we've asked people and people have, uh, have come through uh, with uh, a great deal of participation and uh, have really, you know, really come through with that. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew what the 50 bucks was for. Nobody's getting paid. Uh, the hotel is the only person who is demanding it, and obviously you have to do that for that. Uh, so, uh, and our current rate for this room is less than 10% uh, of what they charge for it now. Uh, so um, it's, uh, well, they're not the same. Uh, <clears throat> because we've been here for 10 years. So I uh, just want to let everybody know about what the, you know, what the structure was and why we do that. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions about that, ask me individually and uh, you know, I'll explain a little more about that. So, Stephen, you're back to Does the president have to pay twice as much? No, the president's out of the duck cut. Smooth. And off he goes. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Okay. So uh, I thought I'd do a quick around the room to make sure everybody knows everybody's names, at least initially. I, I, I recognize most people, but uh, everyone might not have to know everybody else. So uh, at the front, we have Jamie. Hello. Mr. Kruger, right? Of uh, Bit by Bit. Yes. Bit by Bit Software Group. Bit by Bit Software Group. Yes. Yes. If you need any software done, call this. <laughs> and talk to Aaron first because he's been previous. Well, Aaron's not here, so tough. All funds are I'm, I'm of course Stephen Soli. Um, so I, uh, I have, I have a day job. I work for a large oil company now. Um, and 
been doing firmware for uh, downhole tools and surface. Uh, and that's Amiga side. <laughs> now that's my real job. <laughs> and then um, Amiga side, I've, uh, I've had I've worn various hats, as you probably have noticed. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, at, the, at the front we have Mark. Mark is. Uh, Right. <laughs> Best new tool on the system. Mm -hmm. Best new yeah. tool? Okay, it's voted in, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Michael over there. I'm Michael. Yep. I'm an uh, old sack guy. In fact, that's my handle, sack guy. Sack guy. He's sack guy on the forums. Right. right. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually one of the co founders of the original and continuing Emmy West. And. Uh, and listening to the yeah. Dev Yeah, and then next, beside him is Bill. Bill. Um, Long time sack guy. I go by Emmy West on the net. Emmy West on the forums. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty obvious what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Eldy, right beside him. Hi, I'm Eldy. I'm an engineer and I'm uh, Eliabu on the forums. Yeah. And then Paul. I'm OS4 beta tester. And Occasional factor on the Vegas. Yep. Jerry. I come in. I want to call you Jeff. Jerry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jerry. I've been a sack member for a little over a year. This is my second dev time. My day job, we're doing budget for the next fiscal year, and this sounded like a lot more coming out here. <laughs> then, then there's Jeff. Yeah. I'm, I'm Jeff Yoder. I'm the other half of uh, Me on the Lake. Uh, that's my part time job. I, Full-time job is a. Uh, I'm an engineering technician for a defense contractor, SRC, at the moment. The past is with a hybrid company, that kind of microelectronics, that type of thing. So I'm, you can see where I'm. Okay, yeah. so. And then Aaron, I don't forget your name because my brother's name is Aaron. Oh, got that. Same spelling, so that's fine. Right. Excellent. <laughs> Good choice. Good choice. Yeah, I'm Aaron from Egan Lake, and my uh, handle online is APS Turk. E P. APS, it stands for Aaron Patrick Smith, and then Turk, T U R K. Turk? Yeah, you know the. Uh, that movie? No, they're years Turk, ago. They, they, they created the first uh, chess engine, but it really wasn't a chess engine. It was a little small, little a midget or a dwarf hidden inside the machinery that made the thing play, and it was called the Turk. Like an oh, automatic nice. chess playing thing. So, just a strange. Yeah. yeah. Strange combination of letters. <laughs> yeah. He thinks it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. There's Mons. Yes. Uh, the graphics kind of guy, I guess. Yeah. They're, they're, you're kind of a graphics guy. You know a couple. Of yeah. <laughs> the graphics guru. Well, well, when you can surpass the Linux guys, you're pretty good. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. <laughs> the that. graphics swami. Swami. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Robert. I'm Robert Goodlett. Uh, you might know me by Goody. Uh, you might have seen me bring beer to some Amy West on occasion. Oh, you're yes. the beer guy. The beer guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aaron told me about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and I, I have your room number for beer. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then there's Brian there in the yeah. middle who's been yeah. uh, moving in. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I, this last year, maybe the prior year, but uh, I was able to attend this year for the DEF CON, and uh, I'm an engineer, um, so, but. Yeah, just an engineer, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I call myself two at work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, we were under the state, not like architects. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the comment. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone got a little name tag, I understand. That is a go on a teacher. We're really special. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Insert campaign and pizza. Um, so uh, I was looking at our agenda. It's pretty packed, actually. Um, and. Um, he thought that it might be a good idea to do his little blurb on device drivers first, kind of generic device drivers in general on Amiga, right? 
Clear your blur on that. So we need to focus on that too. Clear your blur, and then maybe I'll take over, do my SATA stuff. Yeah. And then maybe go back to you, or depending on what we want to do next. Because it, it's pretty much class driven. So whatever we want to look at, we'll look at. And then at some point, lunch will show up as well. <laughs> okay, so I'll leave it to, to Jamie to take over. All right. Um, actually, the first question I have for uh, everybody here is, is there anybody attending today that is not going to be here tomorrow? Or do we have any new additions that are showing up? You're going to look into the cable? Yeah, I'm trying to sort of small. Yeah, I'm trying to sort small. Do you think the cable is poor? No, no, I have no, not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is this giving yeah. us signals? I didn't know this was on or off. It's a mic. I don't know. It's a connected. It's supposed to be. All of them were pre-connected. But I wasn't. I didn't check this. Uh, I'll just be in your way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, to find the right size.
and then correspondingly it'll come back the other way once you actually get the, the hardware. So we go from the API manager level API, which we'll take a, a closer look at, and then down to the unit, which sets up most of the whole process management for device drivers as a whole. So, so far we're just talking about all device drivers, not Ethernet specific. Um, so in my uh, template, you know, for the, for, for the whole thing, you know, this, this framework, the next layer down uh, for the unit is the unit that translates down to handling a series of commands. And this is where all of your stuff is, uh, is happening. This is where all of your um, reads and writes and specific requests, and there's, and there's like 25 additional requests beyond um, read, write, close, flush is in there with, uh, with Ethernet specifically. When you get down into this layer, uh, you have this, you can, you can set up this handful of standard ones that you can respond to, but this is really where it's going to change. You're going to extend this to take and uh, handle whatever commands there are. So in the case of Ethernet, there's a lot of other questions that are asked. So the client comes out and says, okay, I want to open up the unit, but it also is going to uh, set up a type of communication for going back and forth, which I'll take a closer look at. And it also starts, you know, looking at the individual commands. Let me expand that out a little bit. There we go. So as you can see, here they're, they're all CMD underscore flush, read, write. Those are the ones that it's actually responding to that are the standard ones. Any of the other ones with S2 uh, in them is for the, the SANA2 uh, protocol. So when your actually requests come back, and it, it asks a lot of questions, because uh, you're initially you open the device, but when you open the device, it spawns this unit process. And at this point, you're not, the hardware has not been initialized. It's still waiting. Because the SATA 2 protocol specifically says that you want to you, you configure the device when it says configure the device. So it's waiting for a further configuration message before it gets that far. With other device drivers, it would it might configure the hardware immediately on that open. It all it all kind of depends. It's very abstract uh, as far as the device. So in this so in this layer, so I've got it kind of broken down. So the, so the top layer manager communicates a message down to the unit, creates a unit, so you can have this as unit zero. Maybe it's got another one it created for unit one. And it sends this packet data messaging back and forth to each one. This then we call down to the command layer again. And then finally down at the bottom is where we start talking to the actual hardware. So, yeah. All right. So that's a pretty <laughs> overview of how this thing works as a flow. And this is why I kind of wanted to wait, wait for it to do this. Now, the next thing to start out with, one of the challenges is in setting up a device driver is it's not the same as just an executable. You know, if you're writing a program in C, you have a main, you expect that to be your, your jump point, that's where it's going to come in and start. Not so with a device driver or really with any of the libraries. It's a resident object and it has a whole different way to find itself. And this this is what was really kind of confusing when you start looking at it the first time. Now let me see if I can find the, the header file. How does it know? How does the operating system know? What to do with it? I mean, you 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 actually you're going to a Zach. Your client will go to the Zach. It'll say open device, or it'll say open library. But how does it know where the entry point is? Because it isn't made, right? And as it turns out, they use a very interesting trick. Find the uh, uh, here. Oh, 
device interface. Here we go. All right. The vectors, we can start this from kind of reaching the bottom up. When I put this together, I ended up putting a whole comment in here. This is basically started with struct resident. You found it. This is the magic entry point for our device. And from here, all initialization and setup functions are triggered. So what it looks like is this static structure, which is called resident, and it has it has this, and this is documented function. The very first thing on here is match word. Match word is actually an illegal 68,000 instruction code, which it knows it could never execute. So when you uh, actually open up the device internally, it will use like find device or uh, one of the other. So it does a, it does a search. It literally scans <laughs> through the binary looking for that code. And once it finds it, it goes, oh, that's probably a resident structure. Let's look down a field here to the match tag, and that it, it expects that to then be a pointer to the beginning of that same structure. So as you can see. It's libres here. That's the name of that resident structure. I gave the name. The first one. There's your magic match word uh, value, which is a that should be yeah right there. Four a fc sixty-eight thousand illegal instruction. So then the very next thing we do is we point back to the top of this. That's how it validates it's actually the structure and now knows how to go from there. So then it can go down to the next thing, the flags, where we, we see that it's set up as a native, auto init, and cold start. And that's, that's going to take and tell it how to proceed uh, as far as the initialization goes. Then we have, the, there's, there's your major version number, what type it is, it's a, it's a resident object, it's a device, entity device, and then you get into your, your product string, so that's, that's the name of the device itself, and your version string which is, I, I got the header file, the blue set's got the standard, standard version. And then at the bottom, we also have the uh, pointer, optional pointer to the init, which is libcreate tag. So this auto init flag will tell it that it needs to follow that pointer, expect to follow that pointer to this uh, libcreate tag. And in here, this is the next thing, setting it up setting up for the rest of the interface. So this here, we have the data size, how big is the actual uh, device object that, we're, that it's going to create, it's going to bring in. And in my case, that's a, that's a device-based structure. So that has the base device structure, which, which the actual base device is, is very small. It's a struct device. Every, every device structure that you would expect to find there would start with struct device. And that's it. Everything else is an extension to whatever you need it to be. And this this device, struct device, is actually only a library. So when you drill down to the base, the device starts out as a library. It's nothing, it's nothing different from a from a, a, a normal shared library. So we go back. Question? Yes. Um, so is it Roadshow that would um, say scan the file system, find your little driver? Like if you're an Ethernet driver, right? Yeah. It's Roadshow starts up, it goes and scans the file directory, sees your driver in there somehow, and then it would load it, like load seg or something, or open well, library or the way it would work with the way it works with Roadshow is that you specifically configure your Ethernet device. And you say, okay, so I, I want to add an Ethernet device, I call it ETH0, whatever. Here's the actual device driver, devs colon p town 22 yeah, the file itself. that's the file itself. What unit? Unit 0, unit 1. And then you go ahead and configure it for DHCP status, whatever. That's after the fact. But that initial information that you give Roadshow knows where the file is, and it knows what unit it should open it at. And then when it actually calls open device, a ZEC scans the binary to find that resolution. Oh, okay, so Roadshow is calling open device. Yes. Roadshow calls open device. Right. Somewhere along the way, someone did add to a list somewhere. Anyway. And yeah. Yeah. And then it goes open device, and it uses your file, or not your file, your device. Name. 
the user, yeah, an open device, this specific device, this device unit, file. And these parameters. Yeah, and the only parameters initially right. is unit zero. And then it goes to the resident. Oh, yeah, no, so it goes, well, then it load segs the binary yeah. in the memory, and then it does a find device scan for the resident tag. Right, that makes sense. And then the resident tag allows it to actually set up the rest of the areas. So easy. Yeah, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. That's, 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 that's why I have... But the know, roadshow road. thing is the key, and the resident is the road, key. Yeah, yeah, that's the... It's, and now it's, it's a very good point. How, does, how do you get to there? Yeah. 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 You, somebody has to call open device yeah. with the file, and also pass it a unit code, yeah. uh, which it may ignore or may mean something. Yeah. So, all right, so it, it found the resident tag. It followed it with the auto init to say, yeah, set, set it up as a library, set, set it up with an interface. Here's the description, the next thing it needs to look at, the actual lib uh, uh, tag item listing. So these, this is just standard tag item stuff, uh, which you get like very familiar with if you're doing anything with Boopsy or most of the function calls. Because just about everything in, in Amigo S function calls are extended by tags. You'll still find that all over the place. Point to a list of tags or just put them on the stack. So this again is just another set of tags. Uh, value, uh, you know, for the, the, name, the name of the tag and the value of it. In this particular case, we're setting up the, the lib, lib create tags CLT data size. And again, this is telling it how much memory to allocate for your device structure. If, you know, the base here would just be size of struct device, which is, again, we looked at that, it's only has a, it only has a library program. I mean, it's just, it's, it's very small. That's the base. But then, of course, the natural thing is that you want to extend that. Now, if you take a closer look at what I did, device base always starts with that group device. That, that's the start of it. And then all of this is added. Um, the, uh, for, for bizarre reasons, this device structure is only word aligned, uh, which can cause all kinds of fun problems. So I avoid them. Uh, by padding it with two more bytes. Because I want everything to start properly on uh, a 32-bit boundary for all the pointers and everything. Now the compiler should pad that for me, but I don't take any chances. So I just put in a pad of two bytes and now it lines it. So that's, that's something to keep in mind is not every single structure in Amigo S will necessarily mean that your word aligned or your long word aligned. And which, which, and it can, when it comes to like low-level resident stuff, that could be very important. Uh, how it is, but or, or for a lot of compiling stuff, you don't really care because you just follow the references within it. It doesn't matter if it's actually here or two bytes below that or whatever. The compiler will add a path. So, but that's what that's what the path. Is, so it just aligns it. There. And then you can see we have a uh, pointer to the, uh, the segment list. There's a semaphore in there, and uh, there's my open. Uh, unit open mask. This tells me this, this, this stuff is to, to track whether or not the unit's already been opened. Because yes, under Amigo S, it is possible to open the same device unit, the same device and the same unit number more than once. Now, how the device is up to the device driver. But case in point, back in the day when you had the first port of the TCP IP stack. Stuff you had like Amy TCP and Envoy, you had two different network stacks that could share the same hardware under the same unit number with the same device, which you, you'll never see happen on a PC. <laughs> they just wouldn't do it. But back in the day, they said, this could happen. But really, when it comes to unit numbers and, and what you do with your device structure and what you do from there, it's really up to you on how you want to set that up. So the whole point of what I've tried to do here is to provide a common sense starting point that will work for all devices. So you start out by saying, I want to open the device. I want, you know, well, one unit makes sense or whatever, or it could be 10. It all depends on the hardware you're hooking up to on the other end. But you'll get a device structure, you'll get a unit structures, you'll get separate processes set up, you get the communication set up, 
everything set up for you up to the point where you can start saying, okay, what commands, you know, how does it deal with the actual commands? And, what, and how does it communicate with the hardware? So, okay, so going back to this. And in here, um, the other thing that's in here, of course, I've got a semaphore lock in here. You've asked it, some flag fields. But you'll also find pointers to the libraries that you need. Now, in this particular case, you're dealing with uh, the library itself, and then also the, uh, uh, the, the device structure, the actual units of separate processes. And you could be doing further separate task handling down lower level as well. So what you want to do to keep everything straight is you want each layer to independently open up its own libraries. Because you don't want to, if you opened up at the manager level and you said, well, yeah, I've already got utility, I've already got DOS, yes, but not necessarily in the context of the task that may be orphaned later on. Your, your top level device could close and your separate device processes could stay running. And other weirdness like that. So to protect yourself, always make sure that if you're using library calls at any of those layers, that you're opening, you're opening and closing your own handle up. So, the, the, so if anybody else goes away, you're still hanging on to I, I still got DOS. He's still there for me. And you know, it just keeps everything nice and clean. And then you don't have to worry about uh, whether you're whether you're inside the context of a task or a processor. You know what layer you're at because you, you have you have all the libraries. You so you'll keep seeing these at each layer. You'll see library pointers for for each you know within each one, and that's why because everybody's got to open and manage their own. Okay, so then the other thing, so the library pointers, and then I also um, here's the embedded instance of the global hardware specification structure, uh, which we're looking at, and it's describing now the, the global machine memory addressing your hardware spe specific information, not specific to the, the unit. So this is basically an extension uh, of uh, data that you may need to hang on to that's global to the device layer. Uh, so th though it's going to be um, you know, it's hardware specific information which is not specific to each unit. So. You have all the variables and everything you keep track of on a per unit basis, it's all within the unit structure. But if you've got some stuff that is common uh, to, to manage the, all the units, then that's what, that's what that structure is for. So that's just another one of my devices to provide a means to more easily ex expand it. And in, in my case, I'm handling, uh, let's see, yeah, I keep machine type in there. So, you know, because when, when you're opening up the, a device driver, you're going to have to at some point know which machine are you running on and whether the hardware actually exists. Yeah, you don't yeah. crash. Yeah, you just, you, you always, 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 always <laughs> safely exit. It's just, you know, if it's like somebody decides to run the, the, the uh, A1222 driver on the X5000, the polite thing to do is just say no and go away. Somebody <laughs> always does. It's like, well, it's a device driver, that might work. <laughs> How does that get communicated further up? Is there a DOS signal or something? I don't recall there being an invalid signal from DOS or something like that. There isn't. There isn't. So you just, you just prematurely exit it. Yeah, each device driver has to protect itself. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So there's That's no standard notification yeah. method. Yeah, that is, that is the rule of thumb with, with any of the DOS programming right. is that every <laughs> program has to protect itself. So always check your memory pointers. It's, the, it's it, it is the constant refrain, right? Always free what you allocate. Always release what you obtain. Whatever whatever resources you grab, you have to let go. Yeah, and find so, out if you've got the resource. <laughs> yeah, in this particular case, machine type is a straight up value from uh, the actual call into asking the machine type. I had to fudge the header file on the table one because the SDK wasn't quite up to date to let me know that the machine type for a table was like 20. It's the next one on the list, you know. But there might also there might also be an issue with the uh, the X5000 uh, spe specification. Well, the 20 versus 40. Yeah, because it's not specific enough. The uh, Let me go back to this. You'll see it. You'll see it in the later later function sets up. And then.
then finally, um, I have, this is the actual pointer to the device units themselves. So this is the structure that we allocated and set up under its own process is to manage the communication. And in this particular case, I just set up an array of pointers to my device unit. And in this case, I set the number of units as two. Because that's all I can handle for the, for, you know, well, not, that's why it's defined here, because this, this will actually be defined under the hardware layer. Um, and it depends on, so, so you, you end up taking and saying, it can handle, you, you know, one unit or two units or however many it can handle. So in this particular case, I have two because you have two. But it could just be one point. You could just always add that rest of point. Okay. So going back. Uh, okay, right, here we are. Now that your resident object is found, and it new to auto in itself, it goes to the libcreate tags. First thing, how much memory should I allocate for your device structure? That's in there, size of struct device base, in my case, and then we're just looking at that. So I have all my extra data there, so it's got that. It's going to allocate that for me. Um, the next here is the init functions, where it actually it goes to the manage and manager init. We'll take a look at that. Okay. Uh, this is the oh, right. This is the this is the manager init function. So this is the first function jump into what will allocate or further initialize the device structure that it just allocated and then return it uh, for use. So, so I've got this function is the ROM tag init function entry point for initialization of our device. So it's going to call manager init with a pointer to our device structure, uh, the uh, pointer to the seg list, and also uh, the pointer to the exact. And then you do whatever you need to do to set up further initialization. In this case, I'm initializing our only fixed point uh, for a Zach. Actually, that's not really the right way to do it. That's, yes, you, this is. You have I exactly. Well, yeah, I know. Yes, you I don't, don't use the board. <laughs> the, uh, so you're, you're saying, well, no, no, where do I have I exactly? It, yeah, right. Okay, so yeah, so the device call passes it in. And so I could set up my exact base internal pointer. You just point just, just deriving it back to, yeah. to that. Yeah, we don't use four anymore. The, um, well, what do I need that for? Yeah, to obtain the lipdome. Yeah. Right. So here's here's my exact. They pass that in there, so I hold that. There you go. That's my handle that. <coughs> but then the exec base itself is needed to find the, uh, the exec lib node structure so that I can verify the version. But you also have to do your device. Yes. Check your version. Too. Check check your version of the exec. <laughs> uh, that, that's very critical. And it'll be even more critical with the, uh, the X5000. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now the, the, the current Amiga OS does not know where the rest of that hardware is. And the only way to know what version you're running on that does know the hardware is to specifically add that in once they've released it. So whatever it'll end up being, 53.45 or whatever, whatever it is. So that's your further thing. You're checking, you've got to check your exec specifically down to the version in order to make sure that you've got the right one that knows the hardware. And then, of course, you've got to check your machine type and everything like that. So what you're saying is instead of instead of addressing it specifically the four and then using that as a database, you just do take the interface and work your way back. Yeah. Every, I thought about that too, but I was thinking, isn't that kind of quasi illegal too? I mean you're every interface points back to its base. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then that's not going to change? No. All right, so, so instead of pointing to addressing it specifically to four here, we would follow the... Follow the pointer trail yeah. back to exact yeah. That can work for any interface. As the device, 
So I generally don't store bases of anything. I know I can go by as a <laughs> It's a style. Yeah. I'm not sure it knows that interface. Oh, well, yeah, I wouldn't do it right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll flip it. Yeah. I'll do that. Uh, That's an old 68K trick. <laughs> yeah, and it is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So you start looking at and you see it somewhere else, you go, oh, I can use it too. Well, you should. Yeah, it's, <laughs> this, this, it is, this is what was being used in the, uh, the, the, the ROM, the resident tag example that I built this off of. So. Oh, bad example. There you go. <laughs> That's it isn't it always going to happen? Only the one choice you have to copy the, the, the address. So yeah. There anyway it's, for backwards compatibility. Yeah, it's just more of a don't encourage them to keep doing it. It's one of these things that is essentially impossible to change yes. without destroying everything. Well, but, but don't address it anyway because in new code. In new code, yeah. right? This but if but if you ever did change the four, I wouldn't want it in your nice temple. <laughs> yes. No, I agree. That's what I mean. I'll have to take a little we'll decide on the exact yeah. language. It looks, looks pretty. Yeah. So, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. But this is just a general point, though. But things like this. Has, have you all published like a formal statement of direction for things like this? No. So I haven't seen anything. Uh, it's not. It's scattered. Oh, that's the that's point. That's the problem. It's scattered everywhere. Yeah. It's in like the libraries and migration guides. It's very hard to track down. Well, yeah, but that that dates back to 4.0 and yeah. way a long time ago. Yeah. No, there's no like nice summary anywhere. That's why Jamie had to work so hard to, to do all this. pull it all together. Well, that's that's yeah. See? But the nice thing is. He's making a template, so the next guy doesn't have to suffer. That's what all this is. Yeah. yeah. This is a template. Yeah. So if you want to make an Ethernet driver tomorrow, you have to generate one or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Bang. You, you got all this, this this detail stuff that you know you, you want to know, but not all of it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to understand it, at least in a general sense. But yeah. you basically say, as long as it works. Yeah. You know, so you got a skeleton right away. Yeah. You can start banging and putting commands in and banging harder. Yeah. And, and I'll I'll show you the, the steps that I I take to take it actually do another Ethernet card. You know, so Alright, so we've uh, we've traversed far enough to actually have it allocate our memory base, make the call to initialize that device structure and uh, and then come back. Uh, returning, so I do all of my library open calls and everything here. Set up the device. Uh, this is where, uh, oh, I don't want to skip this magic, right? So we, we came in, it made, it, we, we told it to allocate the, that size memory. It made our function call in to initialize that memory. In that initialization, one of the very first things we did was look at the exact, is it valid? Can, can we even run? Because it's a total showstopper. If it's the wrong version, no good. Uh, we got the right version. Now we can go ahead and start setting up our internal copies for all the libraries that we need. And here is where we do and obtain of the uh, exact briefly, just to make sure we don't have any weirdness go on while we set this up. So obtain the exec, and then initialize the library structure the rest of the way. So in this case, yeah. Another your priority there, does that mean anything in, in Ethernet drivers? Device That's priority? a very good question. Um, it, I suppose it can. I mean, it comes down to task priority. So theoretically, it should use this to set up. That's a question I have. <coughs> it, it's, not a, it's not Ethernet driver specific. It's, 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 it's process specific. Right? Yeah. That's right. yeah. I so, on other devices, it does mean. But I don't think it means anything on the internet. Well, it, it wouldn't be down to that level. My understanding is that it, this is the operating system deciding who gets to execute when. Oh, I'm not thinking resident priority. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 not resident people. priority. Yeah, this is device. This device, is device priority. Device priority. So the task it itself. Anything in this context. I don't know. Mm, no, this. I mean, this is what. I mean, I've got it set at zero. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I've seen other. 
the yeah. names are important. You may be right because I mean, yeah, the name, the name field, and, and the type field is essential. <laughs> so you have to, it has to be typed right, so it knows it's a device, NT device. That's important for debugging, so you can yeah. actually see and, and the name, so you can actually find it. Did you ever look through the task list to try to find something? When, when they don't put a name to anything, it's very hard to track. It's just one task, 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 task. It doesn't have to be that way. If everybody actually named their tasks, then you could debug it a lot easier. And, and the actual user could see, let me bring up the uh, little examiner tool there. Take a look at my tasks. OK. So we're initializing the rest of the, uh, uh, the library structure, device, and then the device's library, lib node. So we set up that device uh, type and priority, which is there again. I mean, name important on there. And then we set up the rest of it. Um, major version, minor version, version string, and open count. Uh, flags, some used and, and uh, they have changed. That's a bit of a mystery to me. Because I'm not, I never did get a really solid idea, I don't remember. That's boss one more time. Um, <laughs> okay, awesome. so, so change <laughs> indicates that we've just changed the lib. So I guess we just created it, so we have changed it. I don't know. No, it, it's, it's difficult to know. That's such old And then set, set if you bother to sum. So I mean, it's, I, again, I don't think this really means anything. It, it does. It does. We have to ask uh, somebody like Paul and Liz. So, but the example used it. Yeah. So I used it, and it didn't break. So I looked at it. Um, open count, of course, this is where the, the library itself is going to keep ticking this number up or down depending on how many opens it closes the tab. So all of that's set up, and then we've got our, got to initialize our pointer to our segment list. That brings up a subject of expunging. Yeah. Uh, Ethernet drivers can be expunged. In theory. In, well, not not your Ethernet driver per se, because the peripheral isn't going anywhere. No, it can't leave. <laughs> I just wanted to hammer <laughs> a chip with a chip and cut yeah. it out. Yeah. So sometimes expunge means nothing, and sometimes yeah. Some, but it should be handled if it can be detached. Yeah. yeah, because if you have an Ethernet card. You could take it out and if it was plug and play, which it isn't, but. So, so the USB Ethernet device, probably the closest. Yeah. Then but you might expunge when you. Then you might expunge. But then there's this a whole different USB device driver stack wrapped around that that I don't quite understand yet either. But you would expunge at least your portion, the Ethernet, <coughs> Ethernet driver yes. portion. Yeah, no, that's, that's a. I think that's uh, right. So we need to save the uh, the seg list for a device later. We'll need this later to expunge the device. So that's why we're hanging on to it now. And then this is then called to uh, my uh, open resources entry, which is going to uh, set up. And this is basically opening the libraries, getting the interfaces of everything that we need uh, to work with, which is largely the exact utility DOS. Uh, you know, it, it could vary depending on what you're actually doing in your in your device driver, but this seems to be the ones that um, I needed, and it's not a bad starting set anymore, because you usually have some function or another you're going to use on. And here, after, so in my uh, uh, initialization, so we're, we're that's still in the manager init call. So it called this for us. We set up, we did our checks, we set up the, uh, the actual device structure, the library structure, obtained the seg list, and now we're opening up the resources, which is opening up the libraries, and ultimately down here at the bottom, this is where I check the machine type. And I put a note in here, this is, this is a possible location where any further initializations could be done further specific checks that you may need to drill down and find. Because at this point, you have this function that you can use. And this one just 
uh, has a flag just to, so it can be enabled or disabled. So if, if for some reason your, your device driver is, is uh, software only, uh, like a, a device driver for the RAM disk, right? It works on absolutely every machine. It doesn't have to make a specific machine check. So I allow it to be disabled with a variable in the uh, in header bar. So if, if check machine type is false, then it just says, okay, you're good. <coughs> Otherwise, it goes ahead and does a standard open up the expansion library where it obtains the, uh, I set the machine type to unknown, and it makes a get machine um, info tags call where it asks for the machine type to be fulfilled. And this is where we actually, so we obtain the machine type, and then I, I have a separate function here to verify the machine type. Now, in, instead of doing this all in, in one uh, spot, the reason it's separated is because you're, it gives you the opportunity to jump layers. This is, um, this is still all at the manager initialization level, where you're making this initial check. But when it gets down to beyond what the OS can tell you, we already checked the exec version. Now we check the machine type. That's what the OS can tell us. Now any further identified details would be the hardware itself. So now it's like, so you know you've got, say you've added a uh, RTL 8169 card, and you, or you have a driver specifically for the 69 and 68 and the other ones. This is the point where you would check, add the code to check that, to make sure that finally, yes, in fact, I can run. Because you have the right hardware, you're on the right OS, and it's the right version of the chip. So that's why I have a separate one. You can see it has a, a, a HW or hardware uh, extension to it. So in all of the layers, I kept that the same. So your, top, your manager level um, has manager underscore for the main API calls. Uh, I know I've got open resources and closed resources and check machine type are kind of like general functions. I didn't, didn't label them as, as a machine. All of the unit specific calls are all unit underscore and all of the command ones here are all command of the CMD underscore. And then finally when you get down into a specific hardware layer, hardware, and here's the, uh, the hardware layer for the, uh, the A12.2, all of the calls under here are hardware, HW underscore. And it helps you keep it all straight when you're actually trying to, to work with the functions. So when you look at that and go, oh, it's, I'm calling um, hardware verify machine type. So you know you're making a call down into the hardware layer at that point to make that check. <coughs> and in here, um, this is intended for the uh, day 1202. So I'm just checking to see if the type found was the H1222. That's kind of the first thing. So this function passes in the exec for you, passes in the expansion library for you, and gives you the machine type. So it's like, here's, the, here's these pieces already opened and ready for you. Do whatever else you may need to do to further check what's going on. This one, all I did was simply say, yeah, did I find the H1222? Great, that's enough. I found it up. I've got the right exec. I've got the right hardware. That's all I need. So it does that, it does that call, it comes back. So now, so now we finally check machine type, came back from that. And now finally we're, we're done with the open resources. And that goes back to your manager init. And if that works, we finally return the actual allocated and initialized device. Now at this point, you still don't have a unit. This was just to get the library, the device, device library, on its feet, initialized properly for use, and to fully verify that you actually have the hardware, you're running on the right version of the OS, and you can actually work. Now, we go back. Basically, at this point, we go back to sleep with the, with the Ethernet driver, because we need to wait for the, the client to prompt us to the next step. So, but going back, let's, let's take a further look at the manager init, because we go back to our device interface, there's more going on. There's also an interfaces call that is um, this guy then goes to your, describes what your 
device interfaces are, because you can have more than one interface. We only have one, so it's a simple one that points to um, the device interface, so it expects to see an array of pointers here, ending in a null. Uh, the only one we have is, is the manager tags. Manager tags then dictate what the interface name looks like. So what the actual device, uh, the name is, I'm just pointer for the device, and what the vector tables are in the version of it here. This finally goes to here. Where is our vectors itself? So finally, we said we have one interface. Here's where to look for it, and here's what it actually is. So this top level obtain, release, open, close, expunge, begin I.O. and abort I.O. That's the only calls that this device will actually answer. Now if you have some others in here that you could support, well then great. Like if flush made sense or, you know, because I think that's, that's pretty much it for the default ones. Just begin and abort. And just, well, and, and as far as I know, abort doesn't work. 